Welcome everybody. This is Keith from Christian Warrior Training. In this episode, I'm going to talk about doing scenarios for your church security team. Now, scenarios are an integral part of training any church security team. I've noticed that when I do scenario training for my team, that a lot of things come out that makes me realize we need to train on something harder. As an example, my team goes through a yearly active shooter scenario training where we bring in role players, we use props, we use guns with blank firing adapters, we have fire alarms going off, and the church is filled with people. And it makes me realize as my people are going through it, some of the things that we need to work harder on. As an example, my team needs to work harder on asserting their authority and opposing their will in certain critical events. We also notice that our trauma training is also lacking. Scenario training also gives people an opportunity to make mistakes before the real event occurs. As an example, we will do domestic violence scenarios where a parent is trying to take a child that they don't have custody of and a fight ensues. Now, this is something that does happen in churches, unfortunately. And I notice that when we do these scenario trainings, that some people start making some mistakes that are totally common that we expect them to make. But the nice thing is, is we're doing it in a controlled environment where they can make those mistakes. We can correct them, have them do it again correctly. So that way, when the real event comes up, they perform flawlessly. So I was thinking to myself, what can we do to help you do better in scenario training? So I made a scenario training guide. Now, if you want to get this scenario training guide, I put the link in the description below. Go to christianwarriortraining.com. There is nothing paid at Christian Warrior Training. You can go there and get free training. I set it up so that we can just help people in the church. Now, if you end up getting a paid subscription, just know that that money goes right back into Christian Warrior Training to help us do stuff like this and to help us put out more things for people so that we can maintain safer churches. All right, so let's get into it. Let's go over the guide so that you can do safe and effective training at your church. <laughs> I want to take a break for one second just to ask you a favor. If you hit like, subscribe, leave a comment, even if the app comment is I'm here for the algorithm or whatever, a dot, anything, it lets the algorithm know that we're important and that other people should watch us. It really boosts up the number of people that see us every time you do it. So if you normally don't do it, do it. We need other Christian men to see this so they can learn and keep their church safe. Hit like, subscribe, follow, and sub go over to Christian Warrior christianwarriortraining.com and go ahead and subscribe to our newsletter. Link is in the description. All right, guys, back to the show. Okay, first things first, when you open it up, you're just going to see this nice open page that tells you a little bit about what you're going to get into. Now, look, you need four critical things to have effective uh, scenario training in your, in your church security team. First and foremost is clear communication. You need to, clear communication is not just some like fluff that we're putting in there. It is straight up. You need to be able to communicate your, to your team what your goals and objectives are. Hey, this is the scenario. This is what we're looking for. Get in there and knock it out. When they're done, you want them to come back. You also want to let everybody know what's going to happen if there is a real world emergency. If there's a real world emergency, we yell out, end exercise, end exercise, end exercise. That way everybody knows that we're done. And then we tell everybody what the real world emergency is. Everybody has proper safety equipment. If you decide that you're going to use simunition, airsoft, something like that, you need to make sure that you have groin protectors, you have the proper equipment. You need to make sure that you have face protection, throat protection, and everything else that you're going to need. You can't expect it. Like I'm going to introduce airsoft into this and I'm just going to let people wear uh, their regular safety glasses. That's how people go blind. That's how people lose eyes. That's how people uh, get teeth knocked out. We, When we do safety training, we put people at all the entry points to stop anybody from coming in. So you cannot come in. We also clear the church beforehand to make sure there's nobody inside that gets caught up in this. Risk assessment might be, we're going to call the police department and let them know, hey, we're doing some security training today and people might mistake it for a real event. We'll let you know when we're done, but we anticipate this is going to be from 8 a.m. to noon. The most important one, no firearms inside of the training area, period. The training area, if you're conducting it in the church, no firearms in the church. Why? People get shot every 
year doing training and they die. This is, there is no debating this whatsoever. And I've heard it all. Well, what happens if something happens, you know, look, then put that in your risk assessment, but make sure there are no firearms inside. Then you put somebody outside of the church with a firearm to make sure nobody comes in. If that, if you're that worried about it, but they cannot step foot inside unless there's a real world event. And then you yell and exercise and exercise and exercise. We're done with training real world event then roll into it. But all every year, police departments lose at least one person, if not more, to scenario training because somebody allowed a real firearm to come inside. No real firearms. I can't emphasize that enough. Don't be a dummy. All right. So when we go through our, our training, the first one that comes up is an unauthorized access to church property, right? You notice how we've set this up for trainer instructions. And trainer instructions are pretty much the same all around. It's it's what the person in charge that is addressing the training should know. So as an example, this scenario is going to involve a situation in which an individual attempts to gain author authorized access to the church property or facilities. The church security team is going to need to work together to identify the individual, assess the situation, and to take appropriate action. And then we're going to go into scenario details. What exactly do you see? Your church security team is on patrol and they run across a guy trying to gain access into an unauthorized area. What is that? Maybe it's an exterior door into the children's area. Why is this grown man trying to access a door that's a back way in to where our children are? That's bad, right? And that's a place where we don't want somebody to be. And it's a critical point that you look at during your patrols. So you're going to go make contact with them and you're going to talk to them. And that person's not going to want to talk to you. And they're going to be evasive because that's what criminals do that are doing bad things. And so this, at the bottom, you'll see skill set. What are we evaluating when our church team members are doing something here? And then here, this is going to test the team's ability to identify unauthorized individuals gaining access to church property. Do they recognize that somebody shouldn't be in there. The team is going to work together to assess the information, approach the individual, de-escalate the personal conflict. So are they going to be able to de-escalate that person and get them to calm down to find out why it is that they're doing? Now, a lot of teams want to just shoo that person away. I mean, I want to know who he is and why he's trying to gain access. So here's your time to ask those questions. And are you going to be able to ask those questions without jacking that person up? I can guarantee you when your team first goes through it, they're going to make everything worse and they're going to screw it up. That's fine. Let them go all the way through. I rarely let it, uh, I, during those scenarios, I rarely stop it. I let them keep making critical errors until it just gets too painful to watch. I'll be like, hey, stop. How about doing this next time? And then I show them what I want them to do. Excuse me, sir, why are you trying to gain access to that area? That's kind of a, a bad area we don't want people in. Do you go to church here? Where do you live? And when they start getting judged, hey, why are you so upset? This is church. This is not a place for people to be upset. We're just concerned because you're trying to access a critical area of the church that nobody ever tries to access. And law enforcement is on the way to come talk to you. But if this is something we can work out together before the cops get here, man, that's awesome. I'd like that to happen. And then find out who they are. If they walk away and get into a vehicle, are your people smart enough to grab a license plate number and a vehicle description so they can give that to law enforcement later? So that's what that's how this is going to go. I just want to give you an idea of how it's set up, how you should evaluate them, and then evaluate how your people perform. Distur the next scenario will be disturbances during services or events. Now, this happens a lot, not at every church, but it happens almost every day or every Sunday in a church. We've got our trainer instructions up front. We've got our scenario details, which is just a person is in the congregation and, and loses it and starts yelling. Your skill set is going to be, can your team identify that that person needs to go, that they need to be asked to leave? Now, I know this is church where we want to be welcoming to everybody, but if they stop the service because they're yelling, they kind of need to go. Do you call law enforcement? Do, do they need to call law enforcement? Can you get the person to come outside? We did this scenario at my church. And one of the things that we did when we did it is we realized that we need an SOP, a standard operating procedure on how to do this. So how did we do it? We found out that the best way to handle it was if the person was in a row or in a pew, you know, in a long row, that we would ask the people in that row to leave. That person, if he leaves too, awesome. Then we get him out of there but they're not going to, they want to keep yelling. We also ask the people behind and in front in those rows, come on out. And then we disperse those people away from the area. And then what we found is it worked out really well because now this person is by themselves three rows deep. And now they realize all the attention is on them. And what, what we found was that that person, like we put our very strong personality people in there, the people that like, oh, I'm going to take this as far as I can. Right. And we found that even they were uncomfortable 
and that they didn't like it and they felt exposed and they didn't have the cover of all those people. Now we're going to do a training video on that later to show you what it looks like, to show you what, what we're doing to get and it, it keeps people safe and it exposes that person. It doesn't provide them the cover that they, that they need. And if we end up having to go hands-on, which we want to do as a last resort, you really want the cops to get there and let them go hands-on. Okay. We don't really want to do that on ourselves because we open ourselves up to a lot of liability stuff that we're not trained for. Even, even if like for me, I'm a, I'm a retired 30 year cop and our team has a lot of retired cops on it. We don't want to expose ourselves that we're old, we're broken. There's a lot of stuff that comes with that. Let the cops who have the authority to deny somebody of their liberty and let them take them into custody. It will also find out if your church staff has it in them that somebody may need to go to jail if they're causing a disruption within the church. So there's a lot of stuff that's going to come out of this. And each church is going to be different. There's going to be church elders that are not going to want anybody to go to jail. They're not going to want, like my minister, he's going to want to handle it on his own. Well, that's fine. If he wants to handle it on his own, I'm clearing all those aisles out in case, that, in case that guy loses it and I need to get on him. I've got three aisles of people or three rows of people gone. And pastor, knock yourselves out. Engage that man. He's really good at it. And we've, we've had that happen before. And he is good at it. But I'm still going to remove those three rows and let him challenge it that way. Okay, next up is theft or vandalism on church property. Now we've got our standard thing up there about trainer instructions. In the scenario details, you come across some church damage and possible burglary. You investigate this further and you actually find the suspect breaking into another part of the church. Now your people are going to stop him and then you're going to go ahead and detain him for law enforcement. Now, skill sets. One of the things that we find out with this one is that some people go hands on with no warning and just basically are just just grabbing people. And we really don't want to go hands on unless we have no choice. You also find out if your elders are going to allow you to do something like that, because some elders, they won't let you do that. So when you come across them, what we really want to see is, hey, church security, we need you to stop right now. Stop what you're doing. Come over here. Let me talk to you. Now, most people are either going to flee or they are going to stop and make an excuse about what they're doing. Some of the things we want to make sure is that they de-escalate. We want to make sure that they call the police and they have the police en route at the earliest possible moment. If the person flees, are they going to chase them? What's your use of force policy? Is your church going to allow it? Well, we found out when we did this scenario, we really hadn't talked about it before. And we found out that we got to figure out what we're going to do as a team. Are we going to allow people to chase people? Or are we going to allow them to go hands on? And we need some clear answers, right? Maybe your church has talked about that already. And so the person flees. If you're allowed to go chase them, all right, you chase them. But are you putting that information out to the police to let them know that you're actively pursuing them? And if you do chase them, do they use appropriate force to stop them? Because you have to use appropriate force, just like a law enforcement officer. You don't get to just do whatever you want. You don't get to shoot the guy because he's running away from a burglary. This isn't the 1950s. You need to do these to find out what your people are going to do. Now, we found out that some team leaders kind of go in condition black, which means they're so overwhelmed by everything that's happening that they can't think critically. We have some people that will engage them, but then don't know how to talk to somebody. Just remember that when they go through this scenario, we have our skill set that we're looking for at the end. One of the things that we want to look for is that if they don't do it right, that we have them keep doing this scenario over and over until they do. Never end with a failure, ever. Always end with a win, no matter what, because you're training them to do it the right way each time. All right, next up is a medical emergency. This is probably one of the biggest things that you're going to have that's going to happen at church. So you've got a medical emergency. It's going down right now. Person's having a heart attack in the sanctuary. Do you call 911, get everybody rolling? Do you grab your AED? Do you start CPR? Are you clearing the area? Do you have somebody outside to flag down the ambulance? Do you have somebody that gets them into the church? Have you cleared a path to make that happen? So what I like doing is just grab people if it's at critical where that person is in critical condition. I like grabbing people from, from because you're not going to continue with the service. Somebody's having a heart attack and they're dying, right? Get a prayer group going, right? They're going to start praying for this poor soul. And then you're going to assign somebody to go outside to flag down the ambulance as it comes in. I need you to go to the front door to guide them to the sanctuary. We need somebody at the sanctuary door to gather people in or to get them through which the closest door to get in there. You want another person to make sure the path is clear for the paramedics to get in there. And then you want a clear path all the way down. 
And then most churches, you're going to have some medically trained people. They're just going to jump in and start working on them right away. This is an easy one. Most people do it okay. What, what I find out is that people don't go out and you know get ready to fly down the church. Now, as a first responder, I can tell you, like if you've never been to that place and you roll up, it's confusing. There, Some of these churches are really big. My church is ginormous, and it's a maze. It's like Winchester Mystery House sometimes. And you really need... I, I liked rolling up and have people... Somebody's flagging you down. They're like, come here. And you're like, right on. I know exactly where I'm going, right? And then people go, hey, they go, I'm going to take you right to where you need to go. All right, let's go. Now, most of the time, they're not going to run like you're going to run because they're carrying about 100 pounds worth of gear and a gurney. So just keep that in mind. I liked having that contact with somebody telling me where to go. It worked out really well. And then remember, end on a positive note, okay? Is your team communicating with everybody else? If, they, if there's a failure somewhere, just do it again. So that way they, they do it right. Active shooter situations. We're not going to go over this today. Okay. I know people want to do active shooter. It's the granddaddy of all scenarios. The problem is to do it safely and effectively. It takes a lot of people, a lot of equipment and a lot of safety. To give you an example, before you come in the church, you get searched. After you get searched and you have no weapons, which I find two people bringing in guns every single time. That is absolutely unacceptable in an active shooter event. Somebody's going to get shot. Somebody's going to die. Once they come in, you got to sign a waiver in case you get hurt. And then you're going to have weapons that have blank firing adapters. You got to have somebody assigned just to those that they're checking them to make sure that they're okay. You got scenario role players. Those role players know they can't point a gun in, in direction of anybody that they fire a blank off. It's up in the air. We don't want to Alec Baldwin anybody. There is a whole bunch of safety that goes into To give you an example, I make a living doing these, doing this type of scenario training. And it takes days worth of work to put together. It takes days of meetings to establish this for about a four to eight hour training session. You've got to connect with law enforcement now, uh, you know, to make sure that they know what you're doing. Our law enforcement officers show up and they actually want to hang out and watch because they feel that it was better trained than they were get, getting from their department, which is a, makes me feel really good. With that said, if you don't have somebody, not, don't just grab a law enforcement officer that ha, you know that you know has gone to this training. You actually need somebody that's been to the training to facilitate this. You can't just have anybody do it. So if you don't have anybody in your congregation like that, then go to your law enforcement agency and tell them you want some active shooter training. My agency, God bless them. I love them. But they brought everybody together to talk about run, hide, fight. And that was about it. And it's like, no, you need to do a live active shooter scenario in your church at some point, but just know it's beyond a YouTube video. And I'm not sure I would put this YouTube video up because there's so much that goes into it. The video would be really long and really detailed. And I think people go look in the comments of my average video and you will realize why there's no way I would put this up because there are people that I can talk, but they don't listen. They just hear what they want to hear and they will always be right. So we're not going to do that, which is unfortunate, but Go to your law enforcement agency and ask them for help to make that happen. Next one up is a fire emergency. You've got a fire going on in the church right now. So a good place to do that is if your church has a kitchen, do it there. That's a great place to do it. If not, put it in the children's wing where the high schoolers are or something like where it's most likely to happen. We activated our church fire alarm during active shooter training for the first time, and it was so underwhelming. I thought it was going to be so loud and everything. It wasn't. It was a very mild alarm with a voice that would come up and say, there is an emergency please go to the nearest exit. And it would just repeat it over and over and over again. And we were all shocked. Like, we're like, wow. But nobody had ever heard the fire alarm before. We also found out there's only one fire alarm pole and it's behind a locked door. I think somebody wanted to do that for safety, but like, yeah. Um, and I know some active shooters start with people pulling a fire alarm, but there's more chance of a fire than an active shooter. So uh, there's that. So with that, does your team know, do they know how to use a fire extinguisher? Some people don't. Um, there's a whole skill set. Go look up another YouTube video about how to use a fire extinguisher. There's more to it than just blasting away. So it's a good scenario to get your people up and running. You got domestic violence in the church there. And we've had domestic violence. We've had stalkers. We've had, we've had people with wanted on felonies for beating their wife. I mean, things happen. Churches are no strange place for something like this happening. And so what I like doing is walking up just, and I did this as a cop all the time. I literally would walk up and just go, this is church. Why are you arguing in church? Seriously, we're going to go outside and we're going to talk outside because this is an appropriate place to do this. Nobody argues and we go outside. And the nice thing is you just brought the whole thing outside. A lot of our team wanted to work it out right there in the children's wing. 
in front of everybody. And you can't do that because emotions are high. Walk up. Hey, well, this is church. We probably shouldn't be doing this in the church. Let's go outside and talk outside. So you guys can also have some privacy. As you walk the man out, if the man is the suspect, because women can be the suspect too, that happens all the time. Whoever the offending party is, the primary aggressor, have them walk outside and then take the other person the opposite direction. So that way now you split everybody up. Not to tell you how to do it, but these are things that we saw with our church security team. You got a suspicious person on church property. What are you going to do? Now, my team, I've heard them call out s suspicious people and they're busy following them. My team is really good, by the way. I'm just using our mistakes because they're common mistakes and they're all mistakes that you guys make too. For my team, uh, they'll call it a suspicious person. There's one that really uh, holds up in my head. I heard him calling it out and the guy did sound suspicious. I ended up going upstairs to the balcony and I saw him and everybody's so busy on the radio trying to find him that I couldn't get on the radio. So I just let it go. And I saw him sitting down on the stairs. I sat down next to him. I'm like, hey man, you all right? And he goes, yeah, I, I worked midnights last night and I've been missing church because of this new job. And I don't want to miss church. So I came and I'm just really tired. And to be honest, I'm kind of out of it. And I'm like, no problem, man. Let me get you to a chair. Let's go. And what I realized talking to him, he's on the spectrum. He's on the spectrum, new job, working nights, but he wants to come to God and wants to worship. We're all good. There's nothing wrong with this guy. And so I get him in place. He's like, oh, thank you. And I'm like, no problem. I see him all the time. We say hi all the time. And he had no idea that everybody was calling him out as, as a potential threat. I got on the radio. I'm like, hey, I just contacted him. He's on the spectrum. He's tired. We're good to go. No need to watch him. And we're all done. So do some scenarios like that where they've actually got to talk to people. Got a child abduction. The most common one for this is going to be a parent that doesn't have custody of a child that knows that the church is the child is in church at Sunday school and they come in and try and take them out of church. Now, good modern protocols will not allow that. And then some, and then the child's taken forcefully. Do you guys lock down the church? Is there a way for the children's ministry to communicate with the safety team immediately? Ours do. They have radios. They can come up on the radio. Abduction. This is what's going on. We can get everybody to entrances right away. Run that scenario and talk about it, right? You know, try and figure out what we're going to do. You also got severe weather, right? Uh, where I'm at, I'm, I'm in Southwest Idaho. We, have, we really don't have severe weather. I mean, we have snow and cold, but we don't have tornadoes, hurricanes, we have earthquakes. You know, like if you're in the Midwest, a tornado rips, you know, is coming this way and then run through that scenario and make sure all your people are doing the right things. All right. Do me a favor. If you've reached this far, most people watching the video don't reach this far. Thank you. Hit subscribe, hit follow, make a comment. It helps the algorithm. Even if it's a comment that says, for the algorithm. And it just lets me know that you're doing it to let YouTube know more people should see this, man. It's It would be super cool if you do that. Sign up for our newsletter. It's free. I don't spam you. I'm doing this for other Christians so that we can keep Christians safe. I'm not running a business here. I just like, I'm a content provider so that it has knowledge that is trying to help you guys. So follow me on social media, sign up for the Christian warrior training, pass it around to all your friends. So they see it and they know, and that's it. Most importantly, God bless you for making it this far. Keep your church safe and remember your ABCs always be caring.